Another winner's bracket game in store here on this glorious Friday morning. The foots of the Rocky Mountains, the North Georgia Nighthawks, and the Warhawks from Auburn Montgomery. The winner gets the day off tomorrow in this eight-team double elimination tournament. The loser will have to play tomorrow with their season on the line. I'm Brendan Gulick, along with Leah Secondo. Game six of this uh, as many as 17, as few as 14 game tournament. So we could be almost halfway through, depending on how things go. In the meantime, we've got two teams that played very good softball yesterday. Both of them offensively uh, are quite good. North Georgia and AUM had good games. The winner of this game, again, they will play on Sunday. No game tomorrow. The loser will play in that bottom spot in that elimination game. They'll play either Texas Tyler or Southern Indiana. Whoever wins that elimination game, which is coming up after this one. I know there's a lot going on. We'll get you set for it along the way. Why don't we focus first on uh, Alana Goebel, who is in the circle. Leah, we did not see her pitch yesterday, but she's had a pretty solid season. Goble, the righty, and the junior with a 1.63 ERA. She really likes to work side to side on the plate in the nursing major, uh, also balancing clinical somehow right now. Throws a curveball at... Uh, the North Georgia batters will have to be able to uh, pick up as before it crosses the plate, uh, has a lot of movement on her pitch. First, or I should say second pitch swinging. Jolie Lester grounds out. 4-3 the put out, let's set the defense behind Goble. In the outfield, it's Haley Ann Frank, Faith Wheat, and Shelby Newsom. Haley Brown, Olivia Acock, the All-American Gia Martin, and Kat Fallon, third to first around the diamond, with Margaret Morgan catching Goble. Now there is one change to the Auburn-Montgomery lineup from yesterday, and that's that Molly Cobb is not available today as Gia Martin makes the catch. Nicely done. There's two outs. I guess there's a possibility Cobb could pinch hit, but we've been told that she's dealing with a minor injury and she won't be in the starting lineup. So we'll have to keep our eye on her. She was pinch hit for yesterday in the bottom of the fifth inning of Auburn Montgomery's 4-0 win over the Seton Hill Griffins. North Georgia in this game by virtue of an 8-2 victory over Adelphi, the Panthers. Madison Simmons takes a called strike. Our first winner's bracket game of the day, which came just before this one. Rogers State pounded. Cal State, Dominguez Hills, 10-2. The game went seven innings. But the Hillcats certainly look like a team that can contend for a national championship. Madison Simmons, 322 average on the season. Leads the team with 12 home runs. Second with 44 RBIs. She's a good hitter. Fouls it back into the screen. Nighthawks are in those really cool powder blue uniforms. And you see Auburn Montgomery in their orange tops and black pants. Eighty-six degrees here in Denver, but cloudy skies and a little bit of breeze have actually made this a rather comfortable afternoon. Simmons fights off another one. It's pretty warm earlier. It was pretty warm. It was, it was getting pretty toasty uh, as we progressed along in game one. You can see some of those darker clouds. We are not expecting rain today. If you believe the Weather Channel, it says that that's not really going to happen. But obviously, look up in the sky and you see some darker clouds. Yeah. And we were told before the game started that there was lightning just outside the uh, eight mile radius from our complex. So they're monitoring that situation, but I guess all we can do is cross our fingers. 2-2, two -two. another good job by Simmons just to stay on an off speed pitch. So good at bat. I'll tell you what, that was cutting back inside. We talk about that curve. That curve cut hard right back inside on those fists. And how she got her bat on that somehow. Very fortunate. <clears throat> a 
Goble misses low. The count runs full. Let's not go any further before we tell you that these two teams played each other back in March. Auburn Montgomery with a doubleheader victory. They swept North Georgia. This is the same pitching matchup, Goble versus Delaney Heberlin, as the second game of the series when Auburn Montgomery won 3-0 that game. Simmons fouls it off. The first game was not quite as tight. Auburn Montgomery hung 12 on the Nighthawks and beat them 12-3. They scored four in the first, two in the second, and six in the third in the 12-3 run rule. Again, the payoff to Simmons. Gosh, is she fighting or what? I don't know how many pitches she has seen in this at bat, but I can promise you I'm 100% certain this is the longest at bat we've seen all tournament so far. We haven't had many at bats that have gone beyond six pitches, let alone this one. Not seeing it on stop bra stat broadcast here, otherwise we would certainly pass it along to you. This one is tagged really well. Straight away, center field. Simmons hits a home run. Wow! What an at-bat. 13th home run of the season for Maddie Simmons. And you had said it, 3-2 pitch, fighting it off, fighting it off, fighting it off. That ball up in the zone, right about bell tie, and just drove it over the seat in center field. I mean, you want to talk about being right on it. She could not have squared that ball up any more perfectly, hitting it to dead center field and driving it over the 205-foot fence. Outstanding. So Mallory Parker stands in, and the Nighthawks strike first. So much for losing that doubleheader earlier in the year right. and not having a great offensive performance in either one of those two games. Champions of the Southeast region say, hey, we're, we're a different team now, and we're here to get rolling. Won the Peach Belt regular season and tournament championship this year. Regular season champs for the eighth year in a row. They are the standard bearer down there in Dahlonega. Awesome little facility in a cute little town of Dahlonega. They love their school in town. Players go everywhere, and the people know about them, and it's a great setting for softball and uh, enchanting little town. Swing and a miss, strike three. Goble gets Parker on strikes, but North Georgia draws first blood. Madison Simmons, a long at bat. She cracks a no doubt about it home run to dead center field. Incredibly well done by Maddie Simmons. Bottom of one with the Nighthawks out front of the Warhawks as Delaney Heberlin picks up the ball and takes center stage. She'll start for the 22nd time this year, 28th appearance overall, 11 complete games, 13-8 and eight this season, including a win yesterday with a 244 earned run average. And while she pitched well, I think it was North Georgia's offense that was 
maybe more the storyline yesterday as J.C. Michael makes a great effort for a foul ball down the left field line. Their offense performed at a pretty high level, but I think Heberlin was maybe not appreciated well enough for how uh, how well she threw. No, I, I thought that uh, there was only there was really only one inning that I thought that she kind of lost her groove, and it was uh, it was the fifth or the sixth that uh, she was throwing a couple extra balls, and she made the adjustment right back in the circle again, gathered her thoughts, and um, really did a nice job. Bill Gattuso has the balls and strikes. Mario Calabri's umpiring at first. Trina Comerford umpiring at third. And that's outside again. Two balls and a strike to Haley Ann Frank. One of four freshmen in the starting lineup for the Warhawks of an impressive 49 and 11 record this season. That really says something to me about having so many freshmen in your starting lineup mm -hmm. and having that kind of a record. Haley Ann Frank has started all but one game and played every game. And Faith Wheat, the freshman center fielder, has only missed three of the 60 games so far this year. She started uh, making her way into the starting lineup about halfway through the year. This ball is bounced towards short and a good play by Maddie Perry. Michael, Parker, and Simmons in the outfield. Mixon, Perry, forehand, and Sinkfield around the diamond with Georgia Blair catching. Haley Brown hasn't seen a ton of time this season. She's playing in her 31st game of the year. She's struggled a little bit offensively. That one's called a strike. And Lexi Love, the designated player, is also a freshman. So for all intents and purposes, you look at this Warhawk team and think, gee, the future could be pretty bright for a team in the Gulf South Conference that that region is awfully proud of. Olivia Acock, one of the few seniors on this side. Boy, Heberlin is getting squeezed. Now, that was... That was uh, that one particular was was definitely far inside, and I understand what Heberlin's trying to do here. She, she's trying to uh, go at, <clears throat> excuse me, Acock, so she can't do what she likes to do with her slap hits. And a forehand takes care of her. Two outs, couple ground balls. Brings up Cat Fallon. North Georgia, pretty darn hot coming in. They've lost only once in the month of May. And if you include yesterday's contest, 8-2 over Adelphi. They've actually won 13 of their last 14 games, getting back to a four-game losing streak. As Cat Fallon rolls one on the ground as well. Low throw, but Sinkfield digs it out. Three ground outs in the bottom of the first inning. The Warhawks go quietly. One nothing North Georgia as we head to the second in Denver. And a forehand, J.C. Michael and Gracie Mixon do up here in the top of the second inning. North Georgia leads 1-0 thanks to one home run. They hit a couple home runs yesterday, Michael and forehand, in fact. Both went deep. We'll show you those here momentarily. 
Forehand went deep in the fifth inning after J.C. Michael hit a three-run shot in the first inning yesterday. Forehand takes inside a called strike. Here's a look back at her 11th home run of the season. Yeah, ball that was uh, out in front of the plate, down low in the zone, and she went down and got it. Met her teammates at home plate. Great celebration. Turned on that one nicely. One ball of two strikes. Wow, good look. Missed it below the zone. So it's two and two. Another sharp foul ball. <laughs> no, she needs to sit back on it just a, a little bit more. Two balls and two strikes to the leadoff hitter, top two. Inside full count. And Alana Goble is laboring a little bit here. Goble's missing low in the zone. She is missing really low into the zone. Popped up, might be playable. Brown is over, just ran out of room. I'll tell you what, there have been a few games so far this week that have had a lot of life and energy. This one's kind of flat. A little bit, game two for us on the day. First game of crowd, a little bit quiet. A little bit quiet. Dugout's kind of loud for the Nighthawks right now, but yeah, yeah, kind of a subdued crowd. Payoff pitch, and Anna Forehand is showing, hey, you want to go inside, that's fine. I have no problem getting to it. So UT Tyler in the background there on the third base side. Over the shoulder of Forehand. Winning in the wings. Three two is lifted in the air to right field where Shelby Newsom grabs it with two hands. And there's one gone here in the second inning. Good pitch by Goble. The forehand did not go out and get low at the outside corner of the plate. There's Southern uh, Indiana and there's UT Tyler. So both those two teams are in the house. Yeah, they're here. And, uh, you know, the first six games of the tournament, it's all good. <laughs> be a little tension for that next game because one of those two teams will be the first to be eliminated. J.C. Michael pops it up in foul ground right behind home plate. And she pops out on that first pitch. Two gone. That'll bring up Gracie Mixon. Mixon coming off of a good start in game one. So North Georgia defeated Delphi 8-2, going two for three in it. Mixon gets her hands inside on one nicely. And she was the top hitter yesterday for North Georgia in terms of coming up with uh, a two for three day. Olivia Sinkfield went two for four. Mallory Parker was two for four. J.C. Michael went two for four with the opening day high, three RBIs.
Goble gets ahead, nothing in two. Avery Dickerson, the starting pitcher yesterday for Auburn Montgomery. Goble their ace, though. Hard ground ball through the middle, base hit. Mixon with a nice piece of 0-2 hitting. The Nighthawks have a runner aboard for Georgia Blair. And the catcher, 71, Georgia Blair. Just waited patiently on that pitch ball, just a little bit up into the zone and a solid hit performance there by Mixon. She keeps her hitting shoes alive from game one into game two. Something's not right with Goble, and they are making a change. How about that? Brinkley Yavak, who has certainly spent plenty of time in the circle this year. But Eric Newell must have seen something he doesn't like from Alana Goble, and he pulls the string quickly. I don't think it's for a performance issue necessarily, but maybe, she, maybe he just didn't... Uh, didn't see her, her normal life and energy in her. Certainly didn't expect to see Avak this early. No, not at all. And uh, pitch solid in the uh, tournament as the Nighthawks having some fun here with uh, up a run and the pitching change made. A little bit different type of a look with Yevac. Screwball and a rise ball. So there's that screwball. Uh, she warms up here. For Yevac uh, coming into this game, a, uh, a 4.34 ERA for Brinkley on the season. This is her 16th appearance on the year. She has one complete game. This is her 39th inning pitched. She's given up 40 hits, walked 17, and struck out eight. Her first win of the season came against North Georgia. She picked up that win on March 22nd. Only pitched three innings that day. Gave up two runs on five hits, walked two, didn't strike out anybody. Gave up a couple of extra base hits, but her team really backed her effort. She's had some Trouble early in the year, giving up a bunch of runs. But on the on the whole, Yavak has had some pretty good outings, yep. especially the last two against Valdosta State. Coming into this national championship tournament, she's only allowed one unearned run on three hits in her last 12 and a third innings, pitching her best softball of the season lately. Well, they must feel like they really need her to step up here. Avak misses high and wide. <laughs> Mixing uh, <laughs> over there at first base, trying to think about how she was going to get back. Uh, everybody laughing. That's funny. Georgia Blair batting in the eight hole. Proudly rocking number 71. We found out there is no rhyme or reason to it. Nope. <laughs> I wonder if it was something as simple as, you know, maybe she didn't have seniority and somebody else picked a couple of the other numbers and she just said, I don't know, pick a number and give it to me. <laughs> Big swing and miss. The throw goes into center field. Mixon's going to try to take third. Wheat with the throw to third base, and it's a little late. Gracie Mixon steals second and advances to third on the throwing error. North Georgia has a chance to add to its one nothing lead here. Yeah, Morgan caught uh, throwing from her knees there and uh, just one that lofted a little bit on the release and Mixon wisely just getting up and running to third base. This ball is hit in the air pretty good to center field, but it'll stay in the park and Wheat makes the put out. It's a little drama there. But it ends up all for naught. North Georgia leaves a runner at third base. one nothing in the middle of the second on NCAA.com.
Bottom half of the second inning for Delaney Heberlin and the North Georgia Nighthawks. They've got a 1-0 lead as Auburn Montgomery tries to get something going offensively. Three ground outs consecutively in the bottom of the first. So it's the middle third of this Warhawk order, including freshman Lexi Love. Lexi hits a ground ball sharply just foul. <laughs> you hear the fans say, well, she touched it. Well, she, if the ball's in foul territory, it doesn't matter where she She's touched it. She's allowed to touch it. <laughs> uh, it's not where your body is. It's where the ball is. Nothing in two. Good change of pace. <laughs> Heberlin was pretty funny to watch there. Kind of gave that, okay, all right, fine. <laughs> Uh, good facial expression. One, two. Got her swing and strike three. First punch out for North Georgia's star pitcher, Delaney Heberlin. I call her a star because of the way she's performed here this weekend. This is a deep pitching staff with a lot of talent, but she is rising to the occasion. Yeah, totally rising to the occasion and keeping it on the outside corner and uh, – Understanding up in the count, just uh, laying it out there and forcing Love to go get it. Gia Martin, named a third-team All-American. She can play all over the place, occupying second base again today. Sharp grounder to second. Forehand throws her out, and now that's four of the first five that have grounded out against Delaney. So Margaret Morgan gets an opportunity. Right down the middle for a strike. Seen a premium on good defense and smart base running through these first five, now into the sixth game of this tournament. Good pitch from Heberlin. It's one of the reasons I've enjoyed watching Margaret Morgan. She is a smart player. See what she does here down 0-2. Watches that one up top. Catchers are a special breed. You gotta have a pretty good understanding of what every position on the field is doing if you're gonna be a good catcher. Morgan chops one to second. This is the Hannah Forehand show. She's got four putouts in two innings. Two in the books. Six up, six down for Delaney Heberlin and North Georgia. They lead it 1 0 as we go to the third. Nine one two for North Georgia here in the top of the third inning. Maddie Perry will lead it off as she goes after 
The first pitch for a strike. Perry one for three for North Georgia and the victory over Adelphi to move them into this game. We'll find out between innings that it's likely nothing necessarily wrong with Goebel. She just hasn't really been 100% lately. And perhaps with the heavy workload she's had at certain points this year, maybe they've just worn her down a little bit. And you certainly don't want to wear her out early in the tournament if uh, you want to make a deep run. So it kind of just confirms what we were saying. It was nothing egregious necessarily. I mean, she got hit a couple, you know, got hit hard a couple of times. Um, obviously gave up that big home run. Morgan Ferguson is warming up down in the bullpen there. So just something to keep our eye on. Yep. Again, another team here that's participating this week that has a pretty deep pitching staff. So the options are plentiful. Good bunt right out in front of the plate. And she beats it out at first. Perry aboard to start the third. A long way for anyone to come and try to make a play on that ball. Good jump out of the box, sizing up the defense. Putting it down, it just died right out. Good job. Jolie Lester grounded out to second base to open up this contest. Chops one towards short. This could be two. Nope, they'll just go the force out. Maddie Perry down to second base. Lester erased 6-3. One gone. North Georgia offensively yesterday. 12 hits in 34 at-bats. So they hit 353 as a team for the game. That was the best offensive game of the day. But it wasn't just 12 hits. It was two doubles, two triples, two homers. And they only struck out three times. Put the ball in play pretty darn well. Olivia Sinkfield, one out and a runner in scoring position. Chopped off the plate, could be tough. How about that? Sinkfield reaches on an excuse me swinging bunt and nobody paid attention. She races down to second. Oh boy, the Warhawks got caught napping. And that Morgan going out to the mound in, or in, to the circle that is. Chopped that ball right in front of home plate and no chance at all to make any type of play. Smart move by Sinkfield as you said to wisely keep going around. How about that? By the way, it's an 11-game hitting streak now for Maddie Perry. So unfortunately, uh, it looks like we are going to have a stoppage of play here. Uh, Got a lightning delay at 2.13 p.m. So we will be delayed for 30 minutes. Any lightning strike within eight miles of the facility is the NCAA rule. So that means the earliest we can start again would be 2.43 local time. I guess it's particularly frustrating because it doesn't feel very threatening at the moment. But safety first. So we will uh, step aside here for a bit. We'll certainly keep you updated if we have additional lightning, but just know that it's a 30 minute delay from every strike. So every time you get a new lightning strike within that eight mile radius of the facility, that clock starts over. And right now the soonest we could restart would be 243. So we're going to be in a delay, and in the meantime, we'll step aside here for a little bit. Hope, uh, hope you'll hang with us throughout the afternoon. It's 1-0 North Georgia. Maddie Simmons will bat 
in the uh, top of the third inning when this delay concludes. You're watching live streaming coverage of the Division II National Championship Tournament on NCAA.com. All right, welcome back to Denver. After our uh, delay concluded, we are ready to continue action here in the top of the third inning at 2.55. And a wild pitch, running come home from the plate in North Georgia. Scores immediately. Maddie Perry dives in safely. How about that, right out of the break. Maddie Simmons at the plate. We didn't even have a chance to Reset things for you, it happened so quickly. I haven't even had a chance to settle in. Olivia Sinkfield goes to third base on the wild pitch. So it's 2-0 North Georgia. Prior to that, the only run that scored came on Simmons. Solo home run in the first inning. It was a very lengthy at bat. She powered a solo shot over the center field fence. Takes a called strike there. So our delay officially went from 2.13 until 2.55. Well, they, do they call that an illegal pitch? He gave the uh, signal for a strike, but then gave the motion, looked down to first base, and the motion was made for an illegal pitch. Yep, and the... Umpire down at first base there, Mario Calabrese, looks toward the dugout, was tapping his right leg as if to say she came off the rubber. Wow. So Madison Simmons is aboard. Runners at the corners. Hot shot through the left side, base hit. Parker brings home Olivia Sinkfield. 3-0 Nighthawks. This is definitely one of those situations with one out and two on board here as the uh, Nighthawks are just sitting back and seeing everything well on the pitch. But this wild get pitch, away. a wild pitch that bounces in and hits Hannah Forehand. So now the bases are loaded. We've been playing for two minutes. This is crazy. <laughs> Talk about no clock, right? things happening quickly. I mean, we've had three batters in this two minutes since the delay ended. Madison Simmons, while at the plate, and with runners at second and third, a wild pitch brings home Olivia Sinkfield. Then Simmons walks on an illegal pitch. Mallory Parker singles home Sinkfield from third. And now the bases are loaded after a hit batter. <laughs> Olivia Sinkfield, by the way, officially singled and then just advanced to second base on the, uh, I guess the defense caught napping. So that's the best way to best way to describe it. Meanwhile, AUM with Avery Dickerson and Morgan Ferguson both warming up. Alana Goble started this game. It didn't last very long, unfortunately. AUM, who won four nothing yesterday, is in some trouble. Yavak in the circle. She's got to buckle down here. Three nothing right now in the third. J.C. Michael, who homered yesterday. 
Hard ground ball through the left side. Simmons scores. Parker right behind her. The throw goes to third and forehand slides in safely. JC Michael with a two run double. It's five nothing Nighthawks. They are just seeing every single thing so cleanly and, and it's not power hitting, it's just contact hitting with the ball. Ball left up in the zone, sitting back on pitches and playing base to base right now and suddenly coming out of this timeout break. Nighthawks bringing up four runs. Well, almost a wild pitch, but Morgan kept it underneath her. Again, a 42-minute delay because of lightning within the eight-mile radius of our complex here, but it never rained. And if you look from where we're sitting behind home plate looking out toward the, the field, if you look off to our right, so I guess that's kind of beyond the right field foul pole, I guess it's reasonably dark out that way, and perhaps it's raining over there, but it's not supposed to come where where we are. In the meantime, we've got what looks like, there you go, you can kind of see those darker skies over that way. In the meantime, it looks like we're going to see another change here. So, AUM trying to figure out how in the world to make this work better. And they are turning things over to Morgan Ferguson. By the way, Molly Cobb also came out of the dugout. And I think she's just changing cards with all of the infielders to put new cards in their wrists. Yes. So Cobb will head back to the dugout. It's just a pitching change. Yavak out, Ferguson in. So Yavak only saw it. Eight total batters. And unfortunately, she's given up four runs and is responsible for the other two on base here. Morgan Ferguson is certainly coming in with a uh, situation at hand here with a 2.87 ERA. 14 and three on the season. This is her 26th appearance. Seven complete games in 102 innings pitched. Giving up 84 hits. 29 walks, 89 strikeouts on the season. She had been the best pitcher for the Warhawks all season. However, she struggled in the postseason. Maybe she'll have the answers today. Well, AUM is in a jiffy. Going to have to figure this out. They've given up four in the third, five nothing at the moment. Second and third with one out. And Ferguson is facing Gracie Mixon. Mixon singled last time up. She was the last batter to face the starting pitcher, Alana Goebel. Had a sharp single right through the middle on the ground that got underneath Goebel's glove. And that's when Eric Newell went to the uh, bullpen and Brought Yevac in. One thing's for sure, this North Georgia team that at times earlier in this season looked like a good team, but not the kind of team that could make a run to Denver. They have figured out offensively how to get themselves locked in as a, as a whole, not just a couple hot hitters here and there. And they have been the best offensive team so far here this week. They've got 18 base hits, and they've played not even 10 full innings. They've scored 13 runs between their two games. Nixon chases. They throw down, and it cost them. Margaret Morgan that? pretty frustrated. That's she turned around and looked at the umpire and asked him a question, but yeah, can she can she leave like that on a drop third strike, first base open? Sure can. An aggressive forehand there and waiting for that throw to go down. So five runs in this inning. Get one more look here at that last strikeout. It's a premium and, on. And fortunately for Morgan, I mean she's got to make the choice quickly. With the runner that far off third? 
Well, Honestly, I don't. But it, you, to yeah, I would personally, I would have held, I would have eaten it a little bit, or double pumped and gone right to third base. But the decision was made, and I think again she was caught off guard because, for whatever reason, as she turned around and looked at the umpire, I don't think she felt that the runner at third could go. Which the ball's live, of course, the runner can go. Obviously, no RBI in the play. Mike Davenport having a word here with Georgia Blair. Here we go, Five runs in the third inning for North Georgia, all of which have come home in the uh, 10 minutes that we've been playing since resuming from that lightning delay. Inside. One and two, ninth batter of the inning. AUM's going to have its work cut out for themselves here in this winner's bracket game when they come back up offensively. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the last time you saw that. I haven't seen that. Ha, <laughs> jeez. Oh, Double hits off the bat. The ball rolls out into the field of play. This is hilarious. This is it. And then hits it again. <laughs> That's two strikes. Two strikes automatically. That's amazing. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I've ever seen that. <laughs> Blair hits a little short flare up the middle base hit. That'll bring home Michael. It's now seven to one. Rather seven to nothing, I beg your pardon. Talk about catching all the breaks too. Number 14, Maddie Perry. So the tenth batter of the inning, Maddie Perry, reached on a bunt single, came home to score on that wild pitch right as we resumed. Margaret Morgan's having a tough, uh, tough time right now. North Georgia got a solo home run for Maddie Simmons in the first. They've exploded for six here in the third. AUM better be careful because they could get run rolled if they give up another run here. They can't get it going offensively. Meanwhile, Delaney Heberlin all of a sudden has quite a cushion. Two zero is lofted down the left field line, and a good running catch by Haley Ann Frank. She had Maddie Perry well played there. Inning over, but not before a whole bunch of fireworks. Run scoring in bunches, including Mallory Parker an RBI single, J.C. Michael a two-run double, and Georgia Blair brought one home. It's now seven nothing in the middle of the third. All smiles for the ladies in those beautiful powder blue uniforms. North Georgia laying it on. Auburn Montgomery 7 to nothing. Starting the bottom of the third inning. Warhawks three scheduled hitters have not yet gone to the plate. 
Haley Brown, Faith Wheat, and Shelby Newsom with their first at-bats of the game. Delaney Heberlin, six up, six down so far with five ground outs and a strikeout. Yeah, see how Heberlin settles in here. She's been resting now for a good hour and a half. Woo, took it off. Haley Brown stepped way up in the box and still that off-speed pitch froze her. Oh, two. Well, she is as effective as any pitcher here this weekend with all that off speed stuff. And really, she knows really exactly, good. you know, she's not afraid to throw the change on the first pitch. She's not afraid to throw it if she's behind. Like, she has that much confidence in her off speed. And she just runs that one right inside. Second strikeout for Heberlin. One down now, and Faith, Faith Wheat comes to the plate. <laughs> it's a great shot of exactly how it just runs up on the inside. Wheat in the air to left field. JC Michael can't catch it. Blows it over her head. Wheat racing for third. The throw is a pretty good one and they cut it. Uh -huh, oh yeah. no. It's a triple for Faith Wheat. Yeah, the, now the wind has changed uh, quite a bit since the start of the game, and uh, it started off what should have been just a, a routine fly ball, but the wind carrying it, and as you said, oh no, because that ball doesn't get cut and comes in to mix in there. It would have been an interesting play at third base, for sure. There are not many things more frustrating as an outfielder when you make what you think is a perfect throw to try and cut somebody down at a base. And it gets cut. Tough break. Good news for the Nighthawks as they lead by seven. Shelby Newsom, who is batting now for the first time today for a game that started at 1.38 local time. It's now 3.12 local time. Of course, we had a long delay, but still, it's been a long time. Is in there a strike called? This is the sixth game of the tournament, and the first five, only one of them has featured a total time of game that's been under two hours. We had a one hour and 57 minute game yesterday. Everything else has been around the two hour mark or a little bit longer. Some moves and odds on that pitch, but uh, I thought it was short and low on that inside corner. Everyone's an umpire when you're sitting behind home plate. <laughs> well, unfortunately for everybody in the stands, Bill Gattuso's opinion is the only one that matters. Three and one. By the way, we said this yesterday, but congratulations again to all of our umpires on uh, their assignment here in Denver. They had to earn Absolutely. their way here just the same way that the teams did, and it's quite an honor for them to be selected to officiate games of this magnitude. Newsom draws the walk. Really no harm, no foul there for Heberlin. Mike Davenport, though, sees something that doesn't feel quite right, so he's going to call time and head out to the circle. I don't think this is to make a move, but just to talk it over. Yeah, more so to kind of just get the defense in. There's just kind of going over the the routine if it's hit back to you once you go to second once you you know b b b be ready for the play you got the play at second to turn the double play it's on your side of the field as you see the warhawks trying to get their rally caps alive here a little bit and one out faith wheat tripled she's at third 
Shelby Newsom walked. She's over at first. A little bit of activity down there in the bullpen for the Nighthawks. Nobody really throwing hard. They're kind of watching what's going on. Wojcicki down there. This is the Warhawks' yeah. best offensive option here. Haley and Frank leads the team in hitting. They could really use her here. Chops it off the plate. They tag her out. Wow. They're lucky that Faith Wheat didn't get caught over at third base as she started to come home as well. Tough break for Frank, who's put out three unassisted. Faith Wheat was a good 25 or 30 feet off the base at third. And I guess, thankfully for her, Haley Ann Frank kind of collided with Sinkfield. Yeah, absolutely. If, and if Frank, you know, if that Frank had thought about it, it's easier to say in hindsight instead of in the moment. But you, you hold up for a second and you make Sinkfield come and get you. Might have made the play a little bit different. Might have allowed that run to come in and score. One hopper back to the circle, and the Nighthawks get out of it. The triple and walk cannot come home. Three in the books. North Georgia leads at 7 to nothing. We're in the top of the fourth inning with North Georgia out front seven to nothing thanks to a six run top of the third. Leah, a bunch of things happened right out of the uh, weather delay. First starting with a run scoring on a wild pitch, Maddie Perry came home. Then they were able to bring home a run on Mallory Parker with an RBI single to score Olivia Sinkfield. JC Michael delivered with a two run double to left center field. They weren't done quite yet. This Strikeout, dropped third strike, throw to first base, resulted in another run. No hesitation there. I like the aggressive base running that the Nighthawks uh, showed that inning uh, with those four base hits and the double to add to it and then the aggressive base running on top of it to spot that six here in the third. Georgia Blair, oh gosh, glad she's all right because that rode pretty high and tight. Georgia Blair also had an RBI single as Jolie Lester got hit in what looked like the helmet there. So Lester's aboard to start the top of the fourth. The 10 batters to come to play in the third inning was the most that any team so far in this championship tournament has sent to the plate in one inning. With Georgia slugging their way around these first couple of games. Olivia Sinkfield lays down a great bunt. Brown, the third baseman, throws over. Oh boy, they've got Lester caught between second and third after getting the run out at first base. She's safe! Oh, Lester got her hand back in. Boy, is that a lucky break. And now she can look back up at Coach Mike Davenport because she is extremely lucky. And I tell you what, I thought Fallon might have pulled her foot at first base uh, on that play. Let's take a look at it here. They haven't made a decision yet. Hard to see on that angle, but uh, boy, the uh, Nighthawks nearly. And we will go take a look at it for the first time. So the question here is, are, I mean, they, it, given that AUM is challenging the play, they have to be looking at it down at second base here. They wouldn't be challenging whether or not they got their own out. You gotta be able to see if she got her hand back in. Unfortunately, with the chain link fence, that might be a little tough. Let's get some clarity here at exactly what's being looked at. Again, these uh, official replays are being conducted 
uh, on site with the umpires, but the decision is made off site in uh, in Pittsburgh. That's probably the best look that we'll have at second base there. Bang, bang at second base. Trina Comerford, the umpire out there. She ruled that Lester got her hand back in there in time. I almost wonder if Mike Davenport might turn around and challenge the out call at first base. That's what I, th that's what I believe that they're actually looking at right now. You think they're looking yes. at the first base? Yep, that they were looking at the, uh, the foot being pulled. Actually, they the are, according to this, they are reviewing uh, if the if the runner at second base is safe. Yeah, and That's those were the replays at. we were just looking at there, and, and the call's going to be upheld. We just received word from Pittsburgh that they will maintain uh, that the uh, replay was not able to decisively say that she was out, so Lester remains safe at second base. Again, very lucky, uh, especially making such a wide turn and uh, will not hear the wrath of Mike Davenport on such a wide turn around second base. She still might main. hear it. She <laughs> might hear it a little bit. All right, so the batter is Maddie Simmons, runner at second with one out. That one bounced in there. Morgan Ferguson is in a tight spot right here. Simmons has hit a solo homer. She's also walked. She reacted like she got hit by that pitch. Yep. Actually said it too, I got hit in the knee, but they don't feel that she did. Not gonna choke up here just a little bit here, more here. By the way, they are officially ruling that Sinkfield had a sacrifice bunt, put out 5-4. Well, we've had some uh, interesting things in this first couple games in the winner's bracket. Simmons takes one right down the middle for a strike. North Georgia, of course, trying to come up with an eighth run and see if their defense can hold. You gotta play five innings if you wanna run rule somebody, so there's still some time. AUM really can't afford to give up that run at second base. Simmons hits a smash fair down the left field line. Lester scores easily. Simmons standing up with a double into the corner. Talk about having uh, your hitting shoes on and just tattooing things. 12 hits last night, already eight hits today. Maddie Simmons doing her job and uh, hits this one deep into the corner. Meanwhile, Mariah Wicker pinch running now for Simmons out at second base. So it's 8 nothing. Wicker can really run. She's in scoring position with one out and Mallory Parker at the plate. Inside and it hit her. So Parker's on with a hit by pitch. Gosh, I mean, I don't know what happened with AUM. They were playing fine. Mm -hmm. Maybe not perfect, but fine for sure. And then all of a sudden, after the delay, I mean, they have just been flatter than flat. Well, when you think about it, it really started in the first inning with Goble getting removed. Uh, right away, it was just never really comfortable. And they're just fr trying to find the right person to get in the circle right now that uh, is going to be able to stifle the bats. This is Hannah Creel coming North on. Georgia. Fourth pitcher of the game. Goble, Yevac, Ferguson, and now Hannah Creel. Auburn Montgomery 
has beaten North Georgia four straight times in their series history, but this game is lopsided the other way. For the graduate student righty. And so once again, uh, we'll see if uh, the bats of North Georgia, how they come to play. I, I would think that first couple of batters gonna be really important, reporting back to the rest of the bench what they're seeing, try to get some squared up eyes on things. This is more of a drop ball pitcher. Uh, but they're gonna see some change, uh, change ups as well from Creel, who really hasn't pitched a heck of a lot this season, only her 64th inning of the year. They're making another change as well. We'll relay it to you here in real time. Lexi Love now catching. So Hannah Creel is actually going to go into the batting order in the sixth spot. That one's called a strike. Margaret Morgan was taken out. Lexi Love, who was the designated player, is now catching. Oh, and two. And a forehand hit by a pitch last time up. She's also flown out. Swing and a miss, strike three. Three pitches in the same spot by Creel. All low, low in the zone. And forehand just couldn't uh, catch up with it. Go get it. Snap throw to second base. Wicker is still there. A one. Boy, that ball was spinning funky. Mm -hmm. Thought maybe it might actually stay in play. Good idea, that won't happen again being 0-2. Unless uh, Michael was absolutely sure, and I'm sure that Mike Davenport does not have that on here, but good thought process as she sized up where the defense was. Downstairs, actually it looks like, according to the live stats, that Creel was not put in, into the batting order, simply just a position switch you can switch the DP and the catcher. So Love will, uh, will catch and Morgan stays in the lineup, but is now listed as the uh, designated player. Well, back-to-back -back strikeouts. Hannah Creo comes in and maybe saves the day in the sense that it doesn't get worse. A couple runners left on base for the North Georgia Nighthawks, but they're able to score another run. Jolie Lester comes home when Maddie Simmons doubled her home. Now it's 8-0 after the top of the fourth.
home half of the fourth inning as you get a look there at the bracket. Now that bracket didn't have any of the updated winners and losers from yesterday, but you can see there are two games on the schedule for tomorrow. They will both be elimination games. We know after this morning when Cal State Dominguez Hills lost 10-2 to Rogers State, Dominguez Hills will play the winner of tonight's elimination game between Adelphi and Seton Hill. This ball is scorched up the middle for a base hit. And they need something to feel good about. Cat Fallon delivers. 100%. Cat Fallon continues to hit the ball hard this championship. And Fallon has not only played solid in the field, but uh, now racking her second hit. She'll uh, take a little breather. You get a pinch runner, Shelby Edgeworth now running. We also know that the team that loses this game will play tomorrow against the winner of our other elimination game, Texas Tyler and Southern Indiana. High fly ball to left, pulled in by J.C. Michael, and Lexi Love is retired pretty quickly. I like the way J.C. Michael played that ball in left field. She got her feet around Brendan so that she was in a solid throwing position. That ball was floating away from her in left field. Well, the runner on first base understands she needs to get that ball back in the infield quickly. Gia Martin takes a strike. The throw to second base is in a ton of time. I don't know if Edgeworth wasn't decisive in whether or not she was going to run or if she got a bad jump, but she just wasn't running very quickly. I mean, thrown out by a mile. Great throw from Blair for sure. 100%. But I don't think the tag does justice to the fact that Edgeworth just waited too long. One and one to Martin. Now that quashes any potential rally here. Unless they can get it started again with two outs. Oh, nice pitch. Get off speed. That was a beauty. Just really froze Martin up. In the meantime, North Georgia trying to match Roger State as 2-0 at the start of the week. And we'll earn an off day tomorrow. Whoever wins this game, North Georgia or Auburn at Montgomery, will be off tomorrow. Yep, get to sit back with Roger State and have the day off. First time that we have seen that uh, here at the D2s. Honestly, I love it. You're being rewarded. You reward the teams that start 2-0. You build in a little extra time by adding another day to the tournament in case you have weather issues. It's really hard to conduct a tournament when you've got four games in a day, three days in a row to start the tournament. So this one has popped up, and Mixon will put it away for the final out of the inning. Just a lot more flexibility now in the schedule for the championship committee, and it allows the teams to have a little bit more uh, to feel like they're playing for in addition to that. All right, four in the books. It's 8 nothing, North Georgia. Auburn Montgomery makes a defensive change in left field as Lexi Bullock comes in for Haley Ann Frank. Gracie Mixon leading off the bottom third of the order due up in the fifth inning here. Auburn Montgomery down 8 nothing, so they've got to keep it here and score at least one run to push this game past five innings. Mm -hmm. We have not had a run rule game yet 
in the first five games of this tournament, although we've had a couple of big offensive showings. And the first game of the day today was 10-2 as the final score, but it didn't get to that eight-run margin until the top of the seventh inning. And the visiting team won the game, so we played a full seven anyways. Makes in one for two. Single, a stolen base, and a strikeout. Sun trying to work its way back out, but there's no question the heat of the day is uh, causing some rain around us, which we hope will stay circled around us and not uh, disrupt the flow. Pretty easy out there for Hannah Creel. Boy, she's come in and made a difference. Well, you know, you, and you, you go from one speed to an, to another uh, for these batters, and they've got to be able to uh, adjust at the plate. And this is where it helps going back to the dugout and talking to your teammates, saying, hey, all right, the speed speed now has changed. Uh, it's throwing more inside, throwing more low. Um, you, you know, you might want to move back a little bit in the box. Georgia Blair, RBI single last time up to make it. That big six, uh, that big six-run third inning. Mm -hmm. Blair expecting some of that off-speed stuff, so she is way up in the box there. So Creel goes hard, low and in. Blair's last trip to the plate was. Uh, a barrage of foul balls before she hit that one back up the middle. So readjusting once again. Grounded to the left side. The shortstop, Acock, makes a good play. Two outs for Maddie Perry. North Georgia's first ever appearance in the D2 National Championship Tournament it was back in 2009. And if they go on to win this game, this will be the first time since 2009 that they started the tournament 2-0. and Maddie Perry slaps a ground ball. The shortstop, Acock, gets rid of it quickly, but not enough. Perry beats it out. It's a second infield single. Good hustle out of the box there by Maddie Perry. A ball that uh, was running a little slow. Getting that good jump, selling it once he was over the bag at first base. Back to the top of the order, and Joe Lee Lester who was hit by a pitch on the helmet last time up. Other than that, a couple ground outs today. She scored the eighth run for North Georgia on the Maddie Simmons RBI double last inning. Runner breaks for second. The pitch is called a strike. She is safe at second base. Perry swipes the bag. So another RBI opportunity here for Jolie Lester. Maddie Perry with her first steal of the day and 20th stolen base of the season. Only been caught three times all year. Grounded to the right side. It's a fair ball. And Fallon tags the bag to end the inning. All right, North Georgia leads 8-0. We're going to the bottom of the fifth inning. And they are potentially three outs away from wrapping this thing up. They've got to keep the Warhawks off the board. We'll see if they can do it.
post lightning delay. North Georgia Nighthawks have brought the thunder and they are pounding Auburn Montgomery 8 0. They are three outs away without giving up a run here of run rolling Auburn Montgomery. That's something that they've done an awful lot throughout the course of the yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, 16 times already this season. And uh, one of those includes the game against AUM. But this is a different venue and a different day and on a neutral field with so much more at stake. Just missed low and inside. Margaret Morgan, the batter, she's now the designated player. Caught the first uh, three plus innings. Mm -hmm. Haley Brown and Faith Wheat to follow. Only two hits against Delaney Heberlin. That one hit her in the back foot. Well, any way you can, Morgan gets aboard. Absolutely, and that's definitely not going to feel good right now, but you're absolutely right. They just need some base runners and just kind of chip away to keep this game going into the next inning. Well, He's Heberlin. got that true poker face, doesn't she? Yeah, just got to take a deep breath here and refocus your energy. It's chopped oh off gosh. the plate. Foul ball from <laughs> Haley Brown. Blair got, got stretched out like Gumby. Trying to make that stop behind the plate. <laughs> you get a look there at the North Georgia coaching staff. They were not selected as the regional coaching staff of the year, but don't let that diminish the job they've done getting this group ready for tournament play. Good job there by Gracie Mixon throwing Haley Brown out. Auburn Montgomery advances a runner into scoring position after the sacrifice bunt. Nice movement on the ball by the uh, defense for North Georgia. Perry coming over to cover third base on that to not allow Morgan to move up another base. Coaching staff at Anderson University and in South Carolina was selected as the regional staff of the year. They were led by their first team All-American first baseman, Kaysen Boatner. Anderson had a really good team this year, but the region is represented by the Nighthawks who have done so well on this stage. They're ready for a, a chance to make a run at a title as Faith Wheat is down on the count 0-2. Yeah, Faith wants that one back too. She knew she shouldn't have gone fishing for it. <clears throat> All feels straight away. Parker shaded just a little towards left. Swing and a miss, strike three. And she taps her chest to say my bad as she runs back to the dugout. I think she was out of the batter's box already in front of it by the time she swung the bat. All right, Auburn Montgomery down to their final out if they can't bring Morgan around from second. Shelby Newsom walked last time up, and she takes a called strike. And Newsom wants to back out here. She knows that uh, she wants to work at her pace, and Heberlin wants to get that ball and get going back in the circle again here. On the corner, strike two. Down in the dirt. Heberlin knew it right away, too. 
So just give me the ball back. Fouled off of Coach Newell. Pretty good job. He had one hand available, that right hand. Just uh, not able to web gem it in. Runners with wheels at second base here to keep this game alive. And Morgan. Softly lined to shortstop. And the ball game is over. An 8-0 shutout victory for the North Georgia Nighthawks. They are 2-0 for the first time since 2009 in this national championship tournament. And the Nighthawks have earned a day off tomorrow with a big win thanks to a six-run third inning. Pretty impressive up and down the lineup for North Georgia, uh, and that's what makes this championship so important. You get response from everyone in your lineup. Heberlin doing a great job once again in the circle for North Georgia. They too now have the day off along with Rogers State. Here's a look at the final line score. North Georgia, eight runs, nine hits, no errors, five runners left on base. Auburn Montgomery, they're shut out on two hits with an error. They stranded three. Winning pitcher is Delaney Heberlin. She did a really nice job this afternoon with that shutout win. It's her 14th victory of the season. Of course, she didn't allow a run with those two base hits against her. She walked one and struck out three. Losing pitcher is the starter, Alana Goebel, although uh, more runs were given up by Brinkley Yavak. She allowed six runs in two-thirds of an inning, but Goebel gave up just one run in an inning and two-thirds. So Goebel falls to 15 and five on the season. Time of the game was one hour and 31 minutes. We also had a 42 minute lightning delay that uh, held us up for a little bit. So we're not terribly far behind schedule. Coming up next, our first loser's bracket game of the day. It's an elimination game. The winner of that elimination game will play tomorrow against Cal State Dominguez Hills. Instead for here, Auburn Montgomery, who falls to 49 and 12. They'll wait to see later tonight whether they play Adelphi or Seton Hill. Stick with us all week long right here on NCAA.com. <laughs>